the most important thing that I learned as an educator is the difference between uh, uninterested and uh, disengaged. For example, um, when my scholars and I, uh, when we were discussing the Constitution in my debate class, I decided to use the song Crank That Soldier Boy <laughs> to teach the three branches of government. First is legislative branch, then is the judicial branch, next is the executive, and as the U.S. president, U.S. government, U.S. government, you. Yo, when the kids went crazy. But you know, more importantly, they were engaged. I met them where they were. When I was younger, I, I struggled. Because teachers, they couldn't understand my um, cultural experience. But you know, who could blame them, right? Growing up, all I saw was drugs, black people, and basketball. Which, ironically, everyone told me would be my golden ticket. But why? Why is it that basketball had to be my only option? Like, when I was a child, my mom, she, uh, she put a ball in my hands, she showed me what to do with it, and she told me that I was good. But what if someone had put a book in my hands instead of a ball? No, what if someone had taught me how to read? and told me that I was smart. A 2019 Opportunity Agenda study found that negative media portrayals that commercialize the toxicity and commodify the trauma of black individuals perpetuates the harmful stereotype that our value lies only on our physical contributions. From a young age, boys who look like me have been conditioned to believe that we are not worthy of opportunity but passion and ambition are born through exposure and affirmation. In his memoir, Fleming reminds us that it only takes one person, one speech coach, to see us for who we are, where we've been, and what we have the potential to be. Today, I dedicate this performance to my speech coach. Thanks for helping me learn how to use my voice. <laughs> Miseducated by Brandon Fleming. The reason I call my students scholars is because when I look into their eyes, I don't see the problems or the attitudes that other teachers may see. You see, I recognize this, this underlying pain and I believe it can be channeled in a new and different direction. What did my teachers see when they looked into my eyes? A damn menace. Boy, our teachers did not know what to do with me. My discipline infractions had to be at least three pages long. You know what, that's a lie. 10 pages long. <laughs> and the only education I ever received was in real nigga shit. <laughs> My cousins taught me the codes, the culture, and the mentality of the streets. So by the time I was 13, I was already knee deep in the drug game. I would, uh, I would sell dope at school, go to basketball practice, went home, sold more dope. <laughs> you see, at that time, all I cared about was getting high. You know, I went off the rails. And even basketball wasn't enough to pull me off the streets. <laughs> At least um, not until my senior year. Yeah, coach told me I was one step away from becoming a D1 athlete. <laughs> and you know, the same cousins that introduced me to drugs cut my supply off. Because they believe that I can finally make it. But you know that college was never really a concern for me. 
You see, that just wasn't a thing that went down in our family. But um, after enrolling in a university with forgiving academic requirements, uh, <laughs> I showed up to my first practice, ready to live up to everyone's expectations. And in that moment, it was just me and the goal. My one chance. And I remember I was getting ready to explode to the goal, and I went, up. Oh. <laughs> but when I landed, I felt a tear in my left knee. And what was supposed to be my golden ticket turned out to be the end of my career. And you know, I was suddenly left in this world that I knew nothing about. <laughs> I had lost my passion, my purpose, my identity. <laughs> but I lost hope. And you know, addiction and anger steered my mind into chaos. <laughs> but then I started to hear shit. I heard the voices of my teachers calling me a waste. I heard the voice of my mom crying, asking God where she went wrong. I heard the voice of my coaches saying, oh, he's hurt, we don't need him. I heard the voices of everyone saying that I had lost my only shot at life and I was lower than I had ever been. Staring into this dark abyss of depression. <laughs> I wanted to die. <laughs> but instead of reaching out and saying something, I, I reached for the pills that promised relief. <laughs> um. When I woke up in that hospital bed, I made a promise to myself that if I was given another opportunity, I would take it. So after I was released from the hospital, I returned to school, but I had nothing to contribute. I had no voice, and as a result, I was invisible. But my debate professor, <laughs> he refused to let me wallow in self-pity. You see, he helped me increase my academic confidence, but it was more of how he did it that made it so impactful. You see, he met me where I was. He asked about my family, my struggles, my affirmations. And when I saw everything that I wasn't, he saw everything that I had the potential to be. You know, he introduced me to these these prominent black scholars who charted their own journeys, and I could not believe it. You know, all my life, I never even knew that black scholars existed. Yeah, 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 maybe they existed somewhere in the world, but not mine. No, no, they weren't in my neighborhood, they weren't on my televisions, and they for damn sure wasn't in my textbooks. You see, what I saw was black gangsters, black drug dealers, and black athletes. So, so that's what I wanted to do because representation is the lens for which we aspire to. And you know, my life, my life could have been completely different had I known these things, had someone taught me these things, had someone encouraged me to use my voice and to write my own story. Because when a man is silent, his voice does not matter. But once he finds his voice, when I found my voice, I was able to command others to see me the way I finally see myself. As bold, as proud, as determined, as resilient, as hopeful, as important, as worthy. <laughs> as educated,
know what started as a, a couple of plastic chairs, an old dusty whiteboard, and a former drug dealer turned basketball failure, turned survivor, turned college graduate, <laughs> became a movement. And you know, I'm often asked the same question. You know, how did you do it? How did you transform these kids so quickly? And my answer is simple. I meet them where they are. And I help them find their voice. Just as someone once did for me.